Raglan News Network is very privileged to have Dr. Essie Jamir, five-time Chief Minister of Nagaland, as well as the governor of various states such as Maharashtra, Goa, Odisha, and Gujarat. He is also the recipient of the country's third highest civilian award, which is the Padma Bhushan. Thank you, sir, for speaking to Nagaland News Network. And we are here right now speaking to you because we are at a very crucial juncture of the state and the upcoming election seems to have caused quite a stir more than previous uh, times uh, because now we have issues such as the ENPO issue abstaining from the uh, elections as well as now just recently the mixing of religion and politics. So maybe we can start from there, sir. Can you just tell us uh, recently the NBCC CEM uh, convener had just come out with a uh, statement uh, an opinion uh, in various dailies and he kind of indirectly also seemed to have been according to the public or various uh, people's opinion that attacking the bjp government in a way so do you think that this religion and politics is mixing in the state of naglin right now as an old man <clears throat> i'm not perturbed by the kind of elections we're having today it was only a repetition of many more elections which we have had in the past. Mm. And obviously, during election, lots of uh, views, opinions was emanate. But one very specific uh, issue which we should remember is, mm -hmm. in India, we have a constitution. And constitution is very clear about the status of every religion in this country, mm -hmm. whether it is Hindus or Muslims or Buddhists or Christians or any other religion, mm -hmm. I think being a secular state, I don't find any reason why this kind of arrangement made by the framework of the Constitution of India should be disturbed. That's one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, what is religion? I think it is individual choice. You cannot impose religion on others. It is between you and God. And therefore, we should not dispute about mm -hmm. whether it is Hindu or Christian or Muslims. Mm -hmm. Let them have freedom to worship. Let them freedom to have any faith in a country. Mm -hmm. Now, recently, some a group of RSS people met me with regard to social practices and religious practices of Nagaland under Article 371A. Okay. So I told them, when we talk about social and religious practices, which is enshrined under Article 371A, clause A, it means, religion means Christianity as far as Nagas are concerned. Mm -hmm. Because for centuries, in this part of the country, neither the Hindus nor Muslims or Buddhists ever cared to spread the religion in this part of the country. But it is only the 19th century, the American Baptists brought this uh, message of God mm. to us. Now it has become part of our religion. And therefore, when we make social and religious practices under Article a, it means Christian practices. And therefore, as far as Nagaland is concerned, we are fully protected under this Article 371A. Mm -hmm. And you people, I said, should not talk about religion in Nagaland because we are not against any religion because we have our own religion, so you have your own religion. That should be the approach, not only in Nagaland, but everywhere in the country. That's what mm -hmm. I told the Muslim. Mm -hmm. That is as far as religion is concerned. Whether a PJP or Congress or any other political parties, they have their own manifestos. Mm -hmm. So let the people uh, choose which, whichever manifesto they want to accept. Is it a democratic country? Mm -hmm. Today, BJP is in the, in, in, in the government. Earlier, it was the Congress. So in, in politics, 
it is entirely in the hands of the people to choose the kind of government that they want to have. So this election comes for what? To decide the form of government which people want. In mm. this election, BJP continue or some other party may come. Mm. So it is entirely up to the people of India. Mm. And therefore we should not have controversy over this or that. That's, that is my own feeling. Uh, but in particularly to Nagaland, we seem to be time and again witnessing that religious beliefs seem to be uh, coinciding with policy decision making. It is influencing policy de decision making as well. Religious beliefs. There are people. Who no, come. the saddest part, not only here in the country, is mm -hmm. we have never faced persecution of Christians under any regime. But today, churches are burned, mm. then uh, religious leaders are harassed, especially Christian. Mm. And whether they got it or not, in Jadiskar, now they said they, they want to ban even the meeting uh, Muslims and Christians. Is it any kind of secularism that we are talking about under the Constitution? Mm. It's a big question. That's why our Nagar people are now confused whether secularism will be truly and in spirit or letter will be in India or not. Because of the various incidents taking place in UP and Jadiskar and elsewhere against the Christians. That is why small people like us, mainly Christians, naturally we are uh, becoming nervous about this uh, mm. development in the rest of the country. That's why it has become more boiling in Nagaland during this uh, election. Mm. And just in connection to that, our neighboring state of Assam also, they have passed the healing uh, practice bill. And that uh, many have claimed that it is because they want to stop uh, Naga missionaries from coming to Assam and doing their practices or uh, conversion and everything in Assam. So do you think that is what exactly is the bill made for? Our, the chief minister of uh, Assam, Himanta Biswasarma, who is also the BJP and the NEDA convener. I'm very sorry that uh, Assam should uh, take such a step. Even the Brazilian uh, Chief Minister of Assam was a congressman mm -hmm. who was, uh, I think, uh, who was also a very important leader in the Congress Party in Assam. Yes, and Congress believes in secularism. Yes. And uh, it is not only belief, it is a part of the Constitution. Because unity of India depends upon unity in diversity. And what is diversity? Different communities, different religions, different races. So it is only when we have diversity, unity in diversity, then we can talk about united India. And therefore the step taken by Assam, I think uh, it is uh, very dangerous for the future. For uh, Assam, for, even for Assam also. For Assam. Yeah. Maybe for the rest of Northeast India where we are uh, predominantly Christian, all Christian states. So, sir, coming to uh, the state of Nagaland, back to the state of Nagaland, uh, we have this boiling issue, the ENPO issue right now, where they are abstaining from the um, elections. And every day we see the PDA government trying to convince the ENPO, coming out requesting the ENPO to take part. Now, do you think ENPO is being firm and correct in their stand? And as you had said also, sir, uh, why talk about divorce after 60 years of marriage? As founder of the state of Nagaland, I want to tell this, this one. Mm. It should be noted by everyone that creation of the state of Nagaland was it the initiative of both the then leaders of Naga Hills and Twin San Frater Division? Even now I remember men like Im Long Chang, Luim Chang, Chuba Sangdam, then Hamne of Hamne Pong, then Chengye of this going up. Then, like Monokyo, mm. like Doji Hanso, yes. like Samba, Samba uh, Chang, yes. or Nakimo, 
all those and, and then Hobongke, mm. and leading say, all those leaders, they also contributed in making Nagaland a reality. Why? They also foresaw that only when Nagas are united, become a family, we shall be able to assert our rights in the committee of this great country, India. So those, our forefathers, or should say many of our forefathers, they had a vision. So I don't uh, understand why people should not be uh, happy to be in the same family from now on, uh, uh, to continue to be in the same family. Secondly, since doing some further division was part of NIFA, mm -hmm. and during the British administration, it was on administered, on surveyed area. Naturally, developmentally, it was very backward. Therefore, when we formed the state, while drafting that 60 point agreement, we said, a special provisions have to be made mm -hmm. because a special attention has to be given yes. to bring up this area at the level of other developer district of the state. That is the reason why in 16 point agreement also, 10 years provisions were given for the mm -hmm. and then we have, up, we have already said to have a regional council mm -hmm. where representatives of the South Frontier Division at that time, mm -hmm. they can also discuss among themselves because it is uh, where, where the shoe pinches. Mm -hmm. And therefore, representative of different area, be it from Koyak area or Pom area or Kemongan area or Chang area or Sadu area, they know the problem. And therefore, they should have the chance, opportunity to discuss this in the regional uh, council. Mm -hmm. That's why this special provision was made. But after three years, it was at their own volition mm -hmm. that uh, they want to be fully participate in, this, uh, in the general uh, administration of Nagaland. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a welcome step, a forward step by those people in those days. Mm -hmm. Second, when we have election, then they also fully participated from different this, um, uh, constituencies. Now, 20 constituencies. Mm -hmm. We have cabinet ministers, we have MLAs, we have member of parliament uh, from Tunsang area. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we, we felt that sending them to parliament would also add to their prestige. Because they also feel that they, people from Mondri Sangiri represent the entire Nagaland. Mm. So in order to groom them, I think uh, we have given the maximum advantage to our representatives in Mondri Sangiri mm -hmm. to win parliament. Not only that, we have also tried that major portfolio like PWT, BHG, medical, education should be a uh, with, with members from Tunsang. Then we have also tried. Yes, we agree <coughs> that uh, the difference between an administered area and administered area is 75 years. Mm -hmm. So naturally, the people of Tunsang now, who are younger people, you will not be satisfied with the kind of development that which they have. Because you are, I think, uh, unadministered for so many years. Correct. So, I think a special arrangement should be made for rapid development of that area, not only roads and communications, but medical facilities, education, and then and uh, rural development. So once we take care of that one, naturally, because representatives <coughs> from that area will be very useful, not only for Nagaland, for the whole country. And therefore, I think you should develop a broader outlook for Naga future. Yes, teaching trouble is there, but I think there's always medicine to cure the teaching trouble. And that teaching trouble is mm -hmm. understanding the problem, who dwell among the people. Instead of politicizing it, let mm -hmm. us come to the brass deck. What really are the problems that we should take up? And you can unitedly 
I think, uh, tackled that problem by all concerned. Do you believe, sir, that the EMPO family, apart from the organizations, from the apex body to the units and uh, uh, the other organizations there, do you think, apart from them, the public as a whole, the uh, several lakh of people that are there, residents of ENPO, do they are they really aware of what this FNT demand is or the uh, autonomous council demand is? Do you think they they are aware of, from the grassroots level what it entails? I don't know, but it is the responsibility of the MLS and ministers from that area to explain to the villagers that this is the standard we are taking. So why should they keep the people? public only in the dark. Mm. And I think uh, general public may not be able to uh, understand the <coughs> intricacy of constitutional issues, legal issues, developmental issues. What they want is, they want to have good roads, they want to have good hospitals, they want to see that their children also get good education, they want to see that they live comfortably in their villages, mm. they want to see that their agriculturists are also involved. I think these are the Basic needs of the people. Right. How far we have been able to meet this? Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest uh, question mm -hmm. for us. Yes. So, mm -hmm. sir, uh, but they've always said that they've got the step motherly treatment from the government of Nagaland, and recently also they've said that they were supposed to uh, hear back from the government of Nagaland regarding the draft that was given by the MHA, but they never got back. Now there's a tussle of the blame game now. Well. I went recently to Losa, mm -hmm. and at Tunisian Road, when I went there, I, I also felt very bad. Mm. Even the road, main road, mm. is so bad. Mm. So naturally, people will not be happy with that kind of road also, number one. Mm. So we should appreciate the cry of this uh, Tunisian people because the road, the only one road, Connecting this Mogokchong um, and Kohima, and even that road is in a very deplorable condition. Mm -hmm. I was also shocked to see that one. Mm -hmm. So, naturally, people are not happy, that's one. But it is the responsibility of the representatives of the Mon area to assert their right because they have got the same right as any other member of the assembly. Secondly, I think uh, government, whichever government comes, they should always take care of the brothers who is weak. Even in the family, we always take mm. care of the weak first. More <coughs> attention does. So that kind of uh, attention would be required. Mm. Secondly, if there was a draft, then uh, why should we uh, be shy to discuss about that one? This is a politics. Huh? Yes. So it is wrong to give in uh, this uh, under the carpet. Secret. Let it be discussed as, uh, and then sort it out. Hmm. Talking about uh, drafts and uh, documents that are, that are not transparent, the 16 point agreement also, you were the lone survivor who have signed and uh, the 16 point agreement. Can you tell us a bit why it is not made, made public? No, 16 point was drafted, deliberated for five days in third convention in 1959. Mm. Five days. Mm. Then only this, uh, we have uh, passed a unanimous resolution about the 16 point. Mm. It was circulated, discussed, and then debated. Then only we have decided and then we have printed, we have never given uh, 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 under the garment. So don't think that it was not discussed. It was a public document mm. for everybody. Mm. It was published. Mm. Then uh, why are we still waiting for this uh, Naga Peace Talks to come to a conclusive uh, end? And um, also, why is it taking so long? Every year, the manifesto of all parties are talking about the Naga peace issue is going to get settled. Every time a new manifesto, a promise comes, this is always there. What is the delay? I want to make it 
very clear on this issue. I think you have raised a very important issue. Now there are two written, officially agreed uh, this uh, document. One is Framework Agreement of Third Accords 2015 between NS NSCN IM and Government of India and which was signed on third accords in the presence of Prime Minister, mm. Home Minister, and National Security Advisor. And it was signed by Mr. Ravi on behalf of the Government of India mm. and on behalf of NSCN IM. We were told that even Led Ilaxu also have signed and Moibai have to sign. On that day, it was and it was a great jubilation among those people who were present in that meeting. They shook hands, they applauded, their, they clapped their hands. Mm -hmm. Then, Prime Minister made a very important uh, statement on that day. For the first time, underground people have agreed to be part of that national stream. All of them happily clap hands mm -hmm. and then sign it. And this was signed after nearly 20 years of negotiation. Mm -hmm. And I believe during these 20 years, mm -hmm. every sentence was examined, every word was examined, every phrase was examined, and perhaps the issue of sovereignty, the issue of constitution, the issue of state, this um, this uh, flag, and our Samen Commission report, and then plebiscite, and so on and so forth. We might have discussed this. Right. Only after 20 years, they have mutually agreed to put it in black and white. Mm. That also officially. So after doing that, and they have clapped their hands, accepted it. Then, after two years, again, they are raising the issue of this uh, constitution and flag. But in that framework agreement, neither sovereignty nor integration appear. And flag in constitutions are the attributes of a sovereign, independent country. Mm -hmm. But when they have agreed that framework without sovereignty, What's the use of uh, raising this uh, issue of flag and constitution? Whatever competencies they are discussing about, mm. if some of them are to be incorporated, it will be incorporated through Indian Parliament and it will be in, in the Constitution of India like through Article 371A. It will be, become part of Indian Constitution. So what kind of constitution they are talking about now? Not only that, Government of India, I think Home Ministry met even recently in the House also. In India, there shall be only one Prime Minister, there shall be only one Constitution, and there shall be only one flag. Mm -hmm. And that is the position of the Government of India made amply clear. And perhaps on that basis, whether it is framework agreement or a good position or sign, so why should they sleep over this? Mm. And why should they linger on this? And I know that whatever they have done, these are the only possible under the present circumstances. Mm -hmm. And therefore, let them be frank. Yes, they have sacrificed. They have suffered. They have labored. Not only in Nagaland, they have negotiated all over the country, outside the world. But have they got any response? No. Because reality is, it has to be resolved with the government of India. Mm -hmm. So now that they have already officially resolved, actually it's resolved, I would only say they should announce it. Yeah. Why should they linger it? it and then when they have already signed the document, mm. why should you mention the manifesto? Uh, yes. Uh, so are, we, you... are we denying that, that they have already signed? Or something has to be done more <coughs> mm -hmm. since they've already signed. And uh, let government announce it jointly with, with them. 
Now people will be very happy. Do you think it's causing more confusion than solution? Uh, because now they are announcing it that we will come to the bottom of it. We will find a solution, solution, but they're prolonging it and prolonging it. And like you said, what do you think is the reason then? You're saying, why are they still prolonging it? Now, I was surprised. Now they have already sent uh, two documents, one with NSNI and one is N N N N F G. Yeah. Yeah. Then after that, now new groups, they are also declaring, we are also joining among yeah. ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, in the past there was only one Naga National Council, which is the political institution of Naga people. But today, 24 factions are there. Mm. So which voice is Indian? It is we who are creating the confusion, the government of India. If it is one Naga problem, I do whatever is signed, it should be the end. But why should you talk about so many this uh, group, so many voices? No, too many cooks have, uh, have come up. So they are spoiling uh, the, 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 the curries. So, so, so much so that now it cannot be tested. It cannot be taken. Mm. They have spoiled. Mm. And that is because of that. Mm. We should not um, blame government of India also. Mm -hmm. When so many voices are there, mm -hmm. for the most it is a confusion. It's not only Naga people are confused, they are also confused. Mm. Which one is what? So, Naga public, especially the Nagaland government, which is the only legitimate representative of the Naga people under the constitution of India mm -hmm. should unanimously tell the government of India mm. whatever has been already done, let it be finalized. Mm. We want to live in peace. I think that should be the, the call of this uh, government and the public also. How long can we go on talking only, only about politics? What's about our economic problem? What's about our educational problem? What's about our unemployment problem? Yes, there are bigger issues. Now, even recently, they said, we are fourth from the bottom. Huh? Yes, this morning yes, paper. This morning's paper. Is it a good, uh, I think, uh, name for us? No. no. Mm -hmm. So we should realize that one also. Mm. There are bigger issues at hand that we need to first look into, I, I guess, as you're saying. And uh, you had spoken about 371A, and uh, the Congress had also claimed in many occasions that whatever is happening in Manipur is a trailer of what is going to happen to us in Nagaland as well. The present situation in Manipur. Do you think that is true? And is democracy and secularism in Nagaland at stake because we tend to use uh, 371A whenever it's convenient, but is it going to affect us? As far as I'm concerned, I don't rely on propaganda or of any kind. 371A was through a political agreement. Because Nagaland is the only state which was created through political agreement. Mm. And this is part of that political agreement. And therefore, I am not afraid of 371A. If something goes wrong, I think the entire world will blame government of India, not Naga people. And I think government of India will not be so foolish to, I think, uh, do away with the 371A. It is an advantage for the government of India also. When Naga people are happy, they are also happy. Naga is also part of India. Yes. But they're slowly also like, for instance, fencing the border. The free movement regime, they're planning to cancel it and fencing the border slowly. But surely they're managing to infiltrate in no, such a manner. Because I was uh, totally opposed to this fencing. I even said, mm. now people of that the Nagas of this Prima area, mm -hmm. they are pro-India. Because they are part of us. Yes. But once you then prevent them from coming, then they have to look to That's some right. other agency. It will be, it'll be more insecure for government of India. So why not? You keep it as it is. Not only that, is it possible to have fencing in a 
high mountain and then ranges. It's not possible. And the best security is understanding among the people. Mm. Both borders. So it, it should be a fear. I think foolishness on the part of government of India to talk about fencing about this uh, uh, this uh, northeast region. It will be it will be very dangerous for the government of India. Also. The government, the center government, is just trying to make one nation, one election, one tax, one religion, uh, everything one uniformity, and there's no unity because we are a diverse country, sir. And um, as an that, o, as an old man, mm -hmm. I understand what you say. Yes. As an old man, the bedrock of Indian hood is unity and diversity. Number one. Mm. How can you keep the people together? Yes. It is the spirit of secularism that can keep people at a harmonious. Don't disturb any other religion. Mm. If you are no have your religion, have it. Who who disturbs you? But in India, you cannot have only one religion because India itself is not only one race. We have Mongoloid, we have Dravidians, we have Aryan stock. So the very nature of India is a diversity, and it is only when we have that unity and diversity we can say that yes. India will survive. Without uh, unity and diversity, India will not survive also. So why should we create a, a system which will di divide India? So you, uh, sir, you're saying that that is not the intention of the uh, NDA right now at the center? Do you, Are you uh, saying that that is not their intention? Would you say in your own perspective and your own knowledge? My perspective is when the constitution is so clear, <coughs> why bring in uh, new terminology mm. huh, for election purpose? Mm. I think the constitution is good enough for all of us. Yes. Huh. Why should we have one nation, one election? One? The present system, it, it works well. Why should it disturb us? Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, coming back to now this elections is in the state of Nagaland. There is the wave is a little different now, and you being a former congressman as well, uh, veteran politician from the party, and do you think the wave is different this year? Because on social media is a different ball game right now. People seem to be in support of Congress, but what matters is bowling day. So, what is your take on that? In the past, for a few years, we have totally commercialized election. Mm. And if during this parliamentary election, mm -hmm. if we can st stop that system, then Nagaland will have a genuine democratic system. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this time, since it is uh, this uh, parliamentary election, mm -hmm. let the electorates mm -hmm. remember that vote belongs to him. And it is entirely up to him where to cast. Mm -hmm. So don't sell it. And if they don't sell it, mm -hmm. any conscious vote and whoever comes, then that will be the real representative of the people. And who, who, whoever wins, mm -hmm. it should be a genuine, true genuine vote. And do you think in the past we have had free and fair elections in the state? I think vote capturing and then uh, Money. Who's selling money making? I mean, actually, unfortunately, it is the voters who who who, who really crippled your representatives. Mm. They sent to yes. par, they sent this Nagaland Assembly mm -hmm. only those people who are heavily indebted because they have to purchase very heavily with high cost mm -hmm. of the votes. Yeah. So, yeah, what will they pay. discuss in the Assembly also? You, while sending uh, your representatives, you break their leg. Where will, uh, how can you walk? Mm. And I hope this system should uh, be avoided. And at least as our forefathers, mm -hmm. let us have free, fair elections so that 
who can have real representative of the people. Yes. Uh, on that note, do you think democracy is going to survive in this in this country and also the state also, uh, considering that everyone seems to be attacking the BJP government of doing so many things. Yes, schemes are for the public, but uh, again, every time they come up with a manifesto saying the poor and the needy are going to be the attention of the government. But they've come up many times with these schemes. How come it's still such a, there's lacking behind in this? Such a vast country. Now, <clears throat> we have to consider an economic development as well. Mm. Today, yes, different political parties, they, they may have their own this um, manifestos and some people may be saying that democracy in danger mm -hmm. on May Delio. Mrs. Indrakani was very popular mm -hmm. but when emergency was declared yes. do you think that uh, the people of India were innocent to that kind of uh, regime? She was defeated because Indian electors are not uh, novice. Electors are very enlightened. For any group or any party which would like to show the trend in uh, damaging democracy, people will give a befitting reply. So if there's a needing side, let the people decide. Because even Mrs. Gandhi, she was, she, she, her soul was defeated. Mm. Why? Democracy is with the people. Yes. Mm. So do we need uh, the ENPO standing up for themselves right now after all these years and they've decided and looks like they're very firm on abstaining from the elections. Now do you need, do you think that the Naga people are standing up now slowly also and a revolution could also happen if things don't go the way that the people want? Considering that we're still lacking in basic necessities and infrastructure and yet so much money is pouring in for the state. Everything in Nagaland. We are only talking about Nagaland at this underground issue. Mm -hmm. Everything is absorbed there. Mm -hmm. Your money is also absorbed there. Your intellect, your effort, everything is absorbed there. Mm -hmm. That's why we are landed in zero. Once settlement comes, younger generation will come up with new ideas. Now they will not give me any space at the prison. They want to have the same speed as the rest of the country. But they are not allowed to even drive their own uh, this, uh, life. So once settlement comes, I'm telling you, those older generation, they will be shocked to see the motivation of the younger generation, the vision of the under, this uh, younger generation, and the kind of uh, approach, way of life that they want to do it to catch up the rest of the country. Generation people like us, we shall be we shall be surprised to see even our own people. Mm. And we have that dynamism with the younger generation. Mm -hmm. But we, I don't know why we are not allowing that, that to grow. So I'm very sure that once settlement comes, Naga people will shine. Because we have a sufficient potential. Why? The geographical location. Once Loki's policy or Eggie's policy is matured, mm -hmm. yes. no one can avoid Northeast region for investment. And Northeast region, our young educated people are also there. We have to clean up our education system. Mm -hmm. Now people are talking about digital. I think we should not be digital, uh, mm -hmm. not only to listen. Yes. So once that economic uh, forces invade Nagaland. That time we should also have the same economic forces mm. to withstand that one and then develop that area. And that is possible, I'm quite sure. 
our young generation, they are well prepared for that. Mm. Uh, younger, older generation should now, instead of talking about the past, we should talk about the present and frame the future for our younger generation. But the way that politics is being uh, there's a <coughs> laid in Nagaland, yes. very, it has become stale. Yeah. And, Still. And huh. to, the huh. corruption huh. as yeah. well. Huh. Sir. Corruption will be there because uh, nothing to do. Mm. Huh. Mm. What will they do? Nagaland is a land of fish table, you see. Mm -hmm. Is there any land in the country, in the world, which is land of fish table? Where people don't want to go and enjoy? No. But we ourselves are proud that we are it's a mm -hmm. land of fish table. I, I don't quite understand <laughs> that. Yes, that's true. We are actually, it's a good thing to be known for being friendly and merry making, but yeah, that is not the only. Yeah. This is not the yeah, only uh, not, yeah. end of it. It's very strange that we have coined this uh, this uh, this title for Nagaland. Mm. Mm. That's true, sir. Lastly, uh, when you were just speaking, I was also the land of festivals. It just came to me also, sir, about the NLTP Act. Uh, this act it seems to be, as they say, doing more harm than good. And now civil society organizations have written uh, representatives, uh, representations to the governor as well as the chief minister, Nipurio. And uh, they're still mum on it. The government is still keeping quiet on it. But what is your take on it? Are we losing out on our economy? Because no, of I'll this? explain to you. Yes. Prohibition did not succeed anywhere in the world. Mm. It was first experimented in America mm. in the 30s. Yes. Yeah. It failed. Even mm. in India, Gujarat, everywhere. Why? Mm. Because it's a part of food. Provided it, we know the limit, number one. Mm. Secondly, now in European countries, it's a part of menu, huh? mm. yeah. But here, we don't know how to drink also. Mm -hmm. So when I was chief minister, mm. church leaders, they started having dharna, hunger strike, all this. But I told them that why not you control your children? Because children of our Religious leaders, they are drunkard. No. Mm. So why not we take care of our family first? Yeah. And why should we not take care of our churches first? Mm. You are talking about drunkard. These are all church members now. And who is the leader? It's the church leader. So why not we have introspection? Why is it? So I said, uh, even though you are forcing me to have this provision, it will fail. Because people will go to some other way. And I, I told them that the uh, example of Kojara, Maharashtra, mm -hmm. America, mm -hmm. but they, they said. But after passing that act, we have closed on all the shops. It's all right. But Liquor is manufactured not in Nagaland, mm -hmm. in your neighboring areas. Yes. Whole country to have this one. Mm. And Nagaland being a part of the, that uh, country, yeah. then these are available. And drunk art, or, or people who drink no, alcohol, then when it is available, it will definitely limit. But when it is not available, they want to drink more and more. <laughs> because even in the Bible, mm. thou shall not do, thou shall not do. But it, it actually urges huh, to do more. Huh? Then, yeah. Similarly here, now see that it is prohibited. So people have got the urge to drink, uh, to violate that one, because it. it's a human nature. Huh? Mm. Now what happened? Not only public, mm -hmm. high ups, police, Many agencies are involved, everything goes underground mm -hmm. or black market. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And it is pointing two things. Since it is unlimited, unchecked, then spurious yes. 
can be brought anywhere. And since it's not available, it can be drank by anybody. And now we, we find that kind of drunkard, that kind of uh, liver trouble, every trouble. No, it has come. Secondly, it has adversely affected morality. Now, black marketing has become a culture. Mm. And Gakkade has become the center of all this now. And we are taking only spirits they drink and losing revenue also. So you cannot control it. But once it is available, I think only limited people will drink. People, and then we can, government can control mm -hmm. liquor. Mm -hmm. But now there is no control. So even the, all the agencies are involved in this. Mm -hmm. Reading or doing, and all the shops they are selling. Uh, and who is controlling? No one is controlling. No one is controlling. Uh, well, everybody is involved. Mm -hmm. So, I was telling every church leaders, don't be so rigid on this, mm -hmm. because the alcohol is not the only sin in the world. Mm -hmm. Because uh, once we remove this prohibition. I think the drinker will be less because it will be available. Mm -hmm. It is since scarcity is there, everyone will like to drink. Yes. Uh. So why do you think the end? So I said the uh, government should have got the courage. Uh, since it has failed, mm. then why should you deprive uh, those people uh, <coughs> who like to carry on their business? So limit it, mm -hmm. regulate it. Other states are also regulating. Mm -hmm. uh. Why? Why only in Nagaland? Mm. Yes. And that is just coming back to my first question, sir, that I had asked you, religion and policy decision making. So like this exactly is one such example. Why do you think the churches are turning a blind eye when it is happening on their right under their nose? And we see it during government functions also that the alcohol is free flowing for dignitaries that come from outside, everything. And it is happening right under their nose. So just coming back to that, I'm going to end this conversation with on that note with my first question and the final question being connected. You see, one, one problem, it was through the pressure of the church, we have uh, enforced this uh, provision. Now, they don't like to, uh, I think, uh, take, who should they have moved in? No? Mm. It was at the instance, the pressure. Yes, if church leaders agree, we shall do it. It's failed. Now they have also seen the constraints, but yeah. now they don't like to take the blame also. They should also be honest as Christians. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, then what is the solution for this? Worry. If it has failed, restore mm -hmm. and try. Mm, try. People will drink, whoever would like to drink, they'll drink. So, what's the harm? Mm. Because church leaders cannot go to every house, don't drink, or they cannot be. Very true. Mm. Yes. And even now they have not been able to control. Correct. That's so why should we punish ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very true. Well, I hope something comes up. The government takes a firm stand also and maybe re review it again, the NLT. Yeah, you know, the whole trouble in Nagaland is if somebody says something, oh, yes, yes, yes. I think we don't analyze. What really is the resolution? Why is it coming? Mm. <laughs> We're only actually like jackals, no? Jackals, they say, whoa, no, 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 all like this. Uh, only echoing. Yes. This, this will not do. Mm. We should be practical also. Very true. Yes. On that note, that was Dr. S. E. Jamir. And we had a very fruitful discussion here, uh, ranging from various topics, uh, from religion and politics, the association that both have, especially in our state, as well as the ANPO abstaining from the elections, and many others, from uniformity to unity of the country, as well as the frontier Nagaland demand, and also the FMR cancellation. And last but not the least, we also spoke on NLTP Act, the Prohibition Act, and where he has given his perspective and his views on all these topics. Esther here with Cameron Personois for Naglin News Network.